and welcome to the homeschool family. In this video, I'm about to show you all of the curriculum I have for the first grade. And there's a lot, because I accumulated a lot of curriculum over the years, and I didn't quite decide what I'm going to use yet for my first grader. So I'm just gonna show you all of it. And I have some curriculums that I like more than others, but I just decided to show you all of them in case you like one more than the other. So let's start with math. For first grade math, I'm leaning towards using McGraw-Hill My Math. And it comes with two books. This is volume one and volume two. I'm gonna show you inside of volume one a little. This is a curriculum that is secular because it's used by public schools. And I have it because my older son actually went to public school when he was in first grade. And those are the books that I got from him. He technically didn't use them because he skipped first grade, but that's a different story. So I had these books, they're not used. So I decided why not give it a try? You can definitely purchase them and use them for your homeschool. Actually, you can find them at thrift stores for very cheap. So, let's look what's inside. So this whole curriculum comes with 190 lessons, which is a lot. But the lessons don't seem that long, so I think we'll be able to fit it in a whole year. So they're divided by chapters. Each chapter has around 10 to 15 lessons. And there's the vocabulary cards, addition stories. It's a colorful curriculum. There's some pictures. There's some fill in the blanks. Model addition. homework, which we're obviously not going to do, addition numbers, add zero, vocabulary, vertical addition. So what I like about this curriculum, it's colorful, it's straight to the point, it's free to me since I already have the books and if you don't, you can buy it actually really cheap. It is secular. It follows the Indiana standards, not that I really care about that. But I just think this might just work. I mean, we have few other curriculums to choose from in case this doesn't work. So if it doesn't work, if my daughter doesn't like it, we'll just switch to something else. As of right now, I think that might just work. Another curriculum that we have is Matthew C. Alpha. And Matthew C, we actually used it last year. We used the primer last year for kindergarten. And here we have the student workbook. We have the tests, which I'm probably not gonna use. And I also have Skip County and Addition Facts Songbook, which comes with a CD. So, it, key, it teaches you multiplication. There's multiplication and for skip counting songs, but there's also songs like adding plus nine, adding plus eight, adding doubles, adding doubles plus one, adding to make 10, adding to make nine, and some adding extras. So there's songs that I think might be helpful for learning addition. So Matthew C. It's black and white. There's not much to it. You do one page per day. What got me sold on this curriculum is that it uses manipulative blocks that come with it. It also comes with a DVD where you can watch the lessons. I thought that would be a great curriculum. So I ended up buying it at a garage sale. Somebody was selling all the levels. So I bought like five different levels. I'm not sure if we're going to use this curriculum this year because I'm not sure if it's enough. 
So my problem is the lessons are so short and to the point where my daughter can finish it in less than five minutes. And I just don't feel like five minutes per day of math is enough. So she liked it, she didn't complain about using this curriculum last year, we used it only because we already had it, and kindergarten was kind of like, oh, we didn't really care if she learned something great, if not, that's not a big deal. But this year I feel like we should look for something better. So I have it, I might go back to it if the other curriculums don't work, but I'm probably not going to start with this curriculum, I'm going to try using something different. I might still use the songbook and the CD just as a supplement, but I don't know if we're, we will use this curriculum or not. We also have some online curriculums for math. We have an online subscription to Beast Academy, which I'm also not sure if we're gonna use because Beast Academy starts at level one Beast Academy is an advanced program. So level one, I feel like it's more for a second grade. So I just don't know if my daughter's ready enough. We started on Beast Academy just to kind of see how it would go. And the first few lessons seemed easy, but it got hard pretty quick. I love Beast Academy. It's a great curriculum. My older son is using it for years already. However, I just don't know if we're gonna start it for first grade. I feel like it would be better to start in second grade. So I might try it, I don't know yet. If she's ready, we might go with it. If not, we'll just wait till next year and try again next year. We also like to use Prodigy Math. We also started using it a little bit for kindergarten. However, Prodigy Math does not have a kindergarten level, so we had to start at first grade level, which was a little bit challenging for my daughter last year. So hopefully this year it should go pretty well. I don't know if I would use it as like a full curriculum. There are some video lessons built in if you're struggling, but it's mostly just for practice. I don't know if it's consider a full curriculum. So we're not going to use it as a full curriculum. We are using Prodigy Math more like a fun supplement. When my daughter would start fighting me on doing school, that's when I pull out some fun games and online curriculums and stuff like that just to switch things up. One more curriculum that we have is Envision Math 2.0. And this is also a curriculum that has been used in public schools. So I don't know how you feel about using public school curriculums. A lot of people want to stay as far away from it as possible. To me, it doesn't really bother me. So you can buy these books really cheap in thrift stores. So this one is also very colorful. There's fill in the blanks, there's some assessments. It looks pretty easy, straight to the point. It, it is colorful, which I like, because I notice my daughter does much better with colorful curriculums. It's not something that super excites me, but I think it would get the job done. I also have some supplemental workbooks and Tinker Active workbooks for math. We love these workbooks. We've used them before for multiple subjects. My daughter really loves using them. So I keep them as for those days when she doesn't feel like doing school and she starts fighting me. Then I pull those workbooks out and she never fights me on those. I also have some other workbooks. Let's get ready for first grade and it has some language arts, but also it has math. So whenever there's something that we would need practice that may not be covered in the other curriculum, like for example, shapes or, or money or time, then I can always use some of these worksheets for an extra practice.
There's also one more curriculum I am considering for math for this year. And that is the Good and the Beautiful Math Level 1. You can get the free PDF online. I didn't print it out yet because I already have so many other curriculums that I'm still thinking, do I really need another one? However, when I was making a video review about the Good and the Beautiful Math, my daughter actually saw it and she was like, wow, I really want to use this one. She noticed that there's some games built in and some hands-on projects and she really liked that aspect. So we might use it, especially since we can just download it and print it out for free. I don't know. That's something we might and may not use. I'm gonna have to think about it. So if you, after all of that, see me using the good and beautiful, don't be surprised because even though we use, usually tend to use secular curriculum and the good and the beautiful is definitely not, I didn't really see much religious content in the math itself. So that may not bother us at all. I just don't know if I want to spend money on printing another curriculum if we already have so many. So I'm gonna have to think about this one. But let's move on to language arts. So for language arts, I feel like we have even more stuff than we did for math. My main curriculum that I think I'm going to use for first grade for language arts is Journeys. It's like a whole big stack. Let me, let me show you. So this is all there is for Journeys. That's how many books it comes with. So there's six six books journeys which are the readers that have the lessons in them and each each book like this has five lessons so there's a total of 30 lessons right here on top of those books we have journeys little reader unit five i have reader's notebook and I also have write-in readers. So let me show you inside of a reader's notebook. There's volume one and volume two. There's two of each. And these readers just have some exercises. There are black and white and they, they go together with the lessons that are in those other books that I showed you. So short sounds, a lot of phonic work, some sight words, and so on. There's some writing sentences, Carrie's George goes to school, there's fill in the blanks, writing in little stories, and inside of Right in the readers, these are more colorful and these have some copy work and they also go along with the story. So lesson one, for example, is about my pulse. There's some sight words that you're going to be learning through these lessons. And the next next lesson is about Pam and Pam and Fen. There's also a little story to read in here. And then there's some check answers, fill in the blanks, and so on. And there goes the next lesson, which is about the weather. And these books are hardcover. And I'll show you first lesson. So unit one lesson, what words they should learn, used in a sentence, read and comprehend, what is the main idea, what's details, what's summarizing, learning about friendship, here's the story that they're gonna read, what is the pal, and stories are colorful and there's just one sentence on the bottom, 
that's why there's only five lessons in each book. So after they read the story, there's comprehension, dig deeper. And then there's your turn. Some questions to answer. Write about it. Then there's a poetry section about friends forever. There's a few poems that you read and compare texts. So here you compare what is pal with the friends forever. Then there's also a grammar lesson built into it, narrative writing, and there's lesson two. So these lessons are definitely com comprehensive. They're pretty long, that's why there's only 30 of them. So I was thinking about spending a week on each lesson. And again, that is a curriculum that is used by public schools. However, they made a homeschool bundle now too. So if you go to Rainbow Resources, you can purchase a whole bundle of journeys made for homeschoolers. So I am not going to buy the teacher's guide. I just don't feel like I need it. I can just follow along with what's written in this book and just do the exercises and work in the write and reader. And I feel like that's plenty of, for what I need. Am I 100% sure we're gonna stick with this curriculum and that's the one that we're gonna use? No, I'm not. That's why I have so many other options that I'm gonna show you now. Our next option is Logic of English Foundations Level B. This was an online version which I printed out the PDF. That's why it looks the way it looks and I have it in a folder. However, you can buy the actual books. And Logic of English is a great program. So many people love it. We tried it and my daughter didn't like it. So that is why we are planning on using something else, but I have it and I can always come back to it if another program's not working. Why my daughter didn't like it? I really have no idea. It was supposed to be a fun curriculum that has games built in and all that. And for some reason she still didn't like it, which doesn't make it not a good curriculum. It's still a great curriculum. I just feel like there was too many, too many rules, too many things that needed to be memorized. So as of right now, I'm putting Logic of English away. We're probably not gonna start using it, but we might go back to it at some point. We also have Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons, which we started on using a while ago. We got to lesson 46 and my daughter was done with it. She said it was boring, so we never finished it. But if you finish this program, it, can get, it gets you to second grade reading level. So we could still use it for first grade. We just wouldn't start from the beginning. We would probably start somewhere in the middle depending, I would have to go through the lessons and decide where, as of, as of right now, we're not really using it, even though she actually mentioned recently that she would want to go back to this. So we might use it again, who knows? And let me, let me show you inside really quick. So this is again, not a very colorful curriculum. It teaches you how to read all the letter sounds. And then as the lessons progress, it teaches you to read some words and eventually you get to read sentences. Here's some simple sentences and they get more and more complicated as you go. Here the reading passage is a little bit longer already. And towards the end, you're reading stories that look like this. So it's very scripted curriculum. Everything you're supposed to say is in red and what you're supposed to do is in black. It's very easy to use. Lessons are not long, but it is not colorful and is not very exciting. So a lot of kids just get bored with it. We also have been using Explore the code. We did the first one in kindergarten. 
Now we're working through explore the code number two. This was just a good addition to do some phonic work. Again, it's not very exciting. It's black and white, but it gets the job done. You have some sentences they have to read and they have to mark which sentence matches the picture. You have some fill in the blanks where you write words. It's a phonic workbook, that's all it is. Nothing super exciting, but it gets the job done. It works really well. I feel like my daughter learned a lot from it, even though she didn't necessarily enjoy doing it. We also have another reading curriculum, which is for first grade. And this one I got somewhere either at the garage sale or thrift store. Um, I don't even remember. But this is Nat National Geographic Reach. And this is language, literacy, and content. And it also comes with a workbook, practice book, which you'll study grammar, fluency, language, reading, graphic organizers, and vocabulary. So again, this is a all-in-one curriculum that incorporates all the aspects of language arts. There's four units in this book. My family, Shoot for the Sun, To Your Front Door, and Growing and Changing. And each unit has multiple lessons. So, for example, unit one, again, it's really colorful. There's readers, built-in sight words, learning some geographies, since it is National Geographic. Identify nouns, so you definitely have some grammar built in. It's colorful. So, it's something we may or may not use. Again, if the journeys won't work out, or if we already go through all the lessons and journeys, we might move on to this one. I don't really know if we will use it or not. However, it was cheap. I only paid a few dollars for it. So I have it, if I need it, I might use it. There's a few more things I have for language arts. And one of them are the fun schooling journals, and I have few of them. So let me show you what I have for first grade. We have teach your child 100 words to read, write, and spell and draw. And this is an animal coloring book. And in this one, a poem is about an animal, then you color the animal, then you fill in the words, that are bold in that poem. Then draw my food and habitat. You fill in the blanks for the same poem again. You fill in some missing parts of the animal. And then there's another poem about a different animal. So we started using it in kindergarten. We might continue using it. I don't know. Next is my first fun schooling journal for princesses and ballerinas and the way how these journals are designed is this is just a place where you where you draw and write some information however this doesn't necessarily have any teaching materials inside of it you have to pair it with some books from the library from your house whatever kids are interested that read those books and fill in the blanks with those books. So let me show you how this works. So there's movie time. Watch an educational documentary and you write something about the, that movie. Then there's math time and you just write whatever math problem you're working on. You can use this paper for math time. Then there's a to-do list, date, how you're feeling today. Backyard science, nature walk, then you color a picture, trace and color, then there's reading time. And again, this is just an empty page where you do your reading and then they can fill in some blanks and draw a cover of the book that they read and write something about what they read about. Then there's copy work, drawing time. Art and logic, where they fill in missing parts. 
And there's math time again. Be creative, draw anything. And then there's another one, to-do list, and so on. And it kind of repeats. This whole journal just repeats. So you do a few pages a day, and that could be your whole school. We're not gonna be using it like that, but every once in a while, when my daughter doesn't feel like doing her regular curriculum, we might use this as a supplement. Another one we have, and this one is my, my daughter's actually really excited about, is pig nap from factory farm to family farm. My daughter loves pigs, so this one we just had to get, even though this one is for ages eight and up, and she's not gonna be quite eight in first grade. However, I feel like she will still be able to use this journal. And this one's a little bit different because this one is based on a story about a pig. So first, you read a story. There's a coloring page about it. There's some vocabulary words. Then you fill in what they mean. Activity, how many pigs live in an industrial barn. You can count them on you can, or you can use multiplication. Then you read a little bit more of the story. Another coloring sheet. More vocabulary words. Can you draw it? Draw a picture from industrial farm. More story. Another coloring sheet. More vocabulary words. Draw a missing part. And so on. So it's a little bit different than most other fun schooling journals. But my daughter's excited about using this. So again, this is mostly a supplement. If she feels like working on it, we will. If she doesn't, we're just gonna use some other curriculums. And one more fun schooling journal that we have is the Poetry Collection Level A. And we use it with some poetry books. And we use this journal during poetry tea time. We do poetry tea time once a week, and this is what we use during poetry tea time. We drink some tea, eat some cookies, and read some poetry, and then they usually fill in a few pages in their poetry journals. So if that just works for us, we're gonna continue doing it. She already worked through maybe half of this journal, so we're gonna continue working in it. There's still a few more things for language arts I have, but these are mostly workbooks, so let me show you really quick. I have my journal. It's just a workbook that has space for a picture and then you write a few sentences about that picture. I also have handwriting without tears, printing power. And again, this is just something we might use if I feel like she needs a little bit more practice in handwriting. It teaches how to write names, and copy paragraphs. There's some copy work already built in. The letters are not that big, which I feel like it's perfect for first grade. So we might use it. We may not, I don't know. We also have Kuman reading workbook for grade one. And this one is colorful. And again, it's just a workbook that if we need some extra practice or a change in curriculum, we might just use this. Next one is spelling puzzles, grade one. And I'm pretty sure I got this at dollar, dollar store. So, Beginning sounds, you fill in the blanks, missing first word, missing last sound, and words with short I. So this is just simple spelling workbook that, again, we may use, we may not. I don't know yet. I also have these uh, workbooks off of Amazon. We use this one in kindergarten, which is 100 must know sight words. Now I have the 200 must know sight words for first grade and each, each page has two sight words on it. It uses the sight word in a sentence. You copy the sight word and then you copy the sentence. 
I also have sideward stories for grades kindergarten to second grade and in this workbook you can make your little books. So you cut out the pages, fold them, and then each book is about certain sight words and then they just color their little books. And I just thought this might be fun to do, to make your own book. So that might make her feel more like, yeah, I want to do this and I want to read it. But the sentences are pretty easy here. So I don't know if this is not already too easy for my daughter. Well, towards the end they'll get a little bit more complicated. So, yeah, we may use it. Sightword Reader Teaching Guide. Again, this is for pre-K to second grade. And this one also has sight words here and some little stories. It's kind of the same format as the other book, but it also has some fill in the blanks where you copy sentences with the sight words. So again, that's just another sight work workbook that we may, we may not use. I also have front of the class first grade workbook. And again, this one is language arts and math in one. So there's, it's a nice colorful workbook. There's some comprehension stuff, uh, puzzles. So it looks interesting and it looks nice because it's colorful. And then there's math in the back. So again, this is just a supplement that if we feel like we need a change or we just need a few workbooks, I can just rip up a few pages, take it with us to the car, depending where we're doing school, if I don't feel like taking our whole curriculum with us, it's always good to have some extra worksheets. So I have that. And the very last one is the comprehensive curriculum of basic skills, grade one. And that has reading, English, reading comprehension, math and spelling. And this one is pretty hefty. But again, it's all just a lot of worksheets in here. They're colorful, but we probably won't be using a lot of it, but we have it. Again, I accumulated all of the stuff from garage sales and things like that, so I didn't pay full price for it. So if we need it, I can use it. Whew, that was a lot. Let's move on to science. For science, we're mostly gonna use mystery science. We've used mystery science in the past with my older son and my daughter always joined in. She also really liked the videos. And mystery science is an online program where you watch the video and they always have a hands-on project that comes after the video. They have some long videos and long lessons that take about 40 minutes, but they also have some mini lessons where the videos are only about five minutes. So there's plenty of material for all kinds of problems and, and questions that kids might have about science. So we're gonna use mystery science probably as my, our main curriculum. However, we also have some workbooks and other books because we're part of a charter school where we have to submit samples. So it's hard to submit stuff from mystery science other than like I can take a picture of what they did because if they just watch the video they learn from the video but how can I prove that they did it so we're we have workbooks just to supplement what they're going to be learning in mystery science so we're going to use science fusion hands-on hands-on exploration online virtual experiences there's one unit, unit one, nature of science, all about materials, soil, living things, plants and animal needs, and engineering and materials. So there's six units in this book. It's colorful. They fill in some blanks. 
looks pretty and colorful and looks like something that my daughter might like using and they're super easy to use as submissions which that's what I like because I can just take a picture of the page and done so so that's our main plan for science but of course we have backups our backup plan is interactive science and interactive science by person is what my son used in public school when he was in first grade so again it's colorful looks very similar to the science fusion however some of it is already filled in because he used it in the school there's still so many pages that are not filled in and I can always erase it since it's filled in with pencil that if we need a backup we can just use this so that's our backup plan we also have this science workbook if there's any lessons that these other curriculums don't cover and I need a workbook about that there's always good to have a backup workbooks so this one is very black and white it's not as interesting However, it does the job. If I need a quick worksheet about something, I can always just use a page or two from this one. I also have Science by the Season for grades K through four. And this one just has a lot of different activities for different seasons. So there's a thermometer and then adapt a tree so for fall make a seed chart and then compare apples with apples catch a spider web try some snow stumpers so these are just some other hands-on projects that if we want to make science a little bit more interesting and we don't have an actual idea we can use some projects out of here that go along with the season. So that's our main plan for science. We also have an access to Generation Genius. So that's more online videos that we could use, but I really think Mystery Science is gonna be enough. But if we have to supplement with some other videos, we can use Generation Genius always also. Last but not least is social studies. So I don't usually spend a lot of time on social studies, however, because we are required to do it, we have some curriculum also for social studies. So our main curriculum, what we're going to use for social studies is person, uh, my world, social studies. And in this book, what I like about it is that it's colorful. It has some short lesson, it has introductions to different vocabulary like community, and then there's some fill in the blanks. It talks about American symbols and what a trade off is, trade, borrow, looking at your world. So I like. I like this workbook. It looks pretty fun and co colorful. It has some map work. It comes through chapter one is my school and my community. Work in the community, looking at our world, then traditions we share, our past, our present, and that's about it. So there's five chapters in this book. I think this is gonna be our main curriculum. However, I always have a backup plan. So, my backup plan, I have this workbook called Beginning Geography by Evan Moore for grades K through two. And in this one, this one's not colorful. This one's definitely black and white. However, I like how it teaches about maps. It teaches about map grid, making maps, landforms. It has different habitats 
then it teaches about oceans and continents, globe. So it's definitely a very useful information in here. So we're probably going to use some of this also. Our next backup is Social Studies Grade 1 by Holton Mufflin Hardcore, or however you pronounce it. And this one is another black and white worksheet that it's definitely a backup. We're probably not going to use it. However, if there's something that I would like to cover and it's not covered in those other curriculums, it's always good to have some worksheets available that I don't have to search for and try to print it out of the internet. It has some holidays in here, so we may use some of it, probably not much. I also have some few other workbook backups, which is a United States Grade 1 workbook. This one is a tiny little workbook from Dollar Store, and it just goes through different states, and you trace the name, there's some dot to dot, some stickers in the end, it's a very small workbook. This one is all about our world, grade K through one, and it's very similar like the other one. This one just goes through countries instead of states. I also have my first fun schooling reading, writing, and research workbook. And this one teaches about different jobs. For example, a doctor or a dancer. There's a coloring sheet, a little poem about it fill in the blanks and so on so you learn about different careers out of this worksheet. I also have Creative Kids Hooray for the USA book. This one's really fun for teaching about the United States and it has hands-on activities for almost every holiday and for some teachers about famous people, famous Americans, President's Day, Labor Day, Uniform, Armed Forces, Eleanor Roosevelt, the North Star, and there's always a hands-on activity for each one of those lessons. So, different alphabets, American symbols, Bald Eagle, United States flag, Washington Monument. So, this is just a fun supplement in case you want to add on some hands-on activities to your social studies. And the last one is 1500 Sticker Fun History. And this book we usually just use together with my other older son history curriculum. When he listens to his history book, my daughter can work in the sticker book. It's very colorful. There's like a little lesson about different time periods in history and then she fills it in. There's so many stickers in here and she just fills it in with her stickers. So it's just a fun book to do. And that would be it for all of our main subjects for first grade. I hope you enjoyed this video. We also do some electives but I am not going to go over those in this video. That might be covered in some other video. So stay tuned for more. I will probably make another video later on this summer about which curriculum we actually picked and how I planned our schedule. So stay tuned for that video. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!